Hello, my name is Daryl Blackby and today I'd like to go through some of the features of the user-defined mode for the O3D 300 3D sensor. To activate the user-defined mode, the first thing we need to do is select the application mode by clicking the tab down the left-hand side of the page here. If we do that, we'll ask you if you'd like to stop the sensor, click OK and proceed to the application page. The application page we can save up to 32 unique applications. To start a new application, click on the plus sign at the top here. And if you've got the latest firmware, you should see an image like this, which has a number of different predefined wizards that we can use and also the user defined mode in the top left hand corner. Once we've done that, you'll see a page for the image settings, which is, activates this tab on the right top corner of the page. Once we're in the uh, image settings, we adjust things like our trigger source, which can be a continuous trigger, can be triggered by the process interface, positive or negative, negative edge triggers from something like a photoelectric sensor. Uh, here we set the maximum background distance. Now this is the distance to the maximum uh, distance object that we can see. So if we're looking above a conveyor, for instance, and it's two metres away, we can set less than five metres. But if we're looking into the open and it can see quite a distance, we'll need to set it further, for instance, more than 30 metres. Uh, to do this, it uses multiple frequencies to give us a uh, pseudo background suppression. There's also the exposure mode here. Uh, we can use multiple exposures, very similar to a high dynamic range on a SLR camera. Uh, with that, you'll see that the more exposures we use, the longer the frame duration here is on the bottom of the page. Uh, we also need to set the exposure time to optimise the image settings. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to use the optimise button here and let the camera make a decision of where the, op where the exposure time should be. Uh, we can also use an auto exposure mode. Uh, which will adjust the exposure time depending on the uh, lighting settings, but this is only uh, useful in the continuous trigger source mode. We can also set the frame rate at the bottom here, uh, typically as low as possible for the application we're looking at. If you've got a fast application, you'll need to increase it, but the slower it is, the better results we'll have as well. Uh, demo right hand side of the page here there's a slide bar if you slide that down we'll see some more uh, functions at the bottom of the page including filters uh, so there's a number of different filters we can apply to improve the image uh, there's spatial filters where we can look at the amplitude or distance image uh, these can be mean filters or uh, median filters depending on the application if you require more information about the filters, I suggest looking in the instruction manual. There's also a temporal filter available, which is a time-based filter, which uh, averages out a number of images. So it will slow the result, uh, but for some applications it can be useful. You see here the clipping box data. The clipping box data um, will allow us to focus on a range of pixels that we want to work with and ignore the rest. So it can be useful for some applications. And at the bottom we have group uses where we have a number of 3D sen sensors working close together and where the lighting could interfere with, with each other. So with this we can uh, adjust different frequencies so they don't interfere. Once you finish that, we go to the next tab uh, on the right hand side, which is where we define our models. Okay, to define our models, at the top here we have a model list. So what I can do is I can add different models. So the models can be either based on level, distance or volume. So at the moment I've got one level model here. If I don't want to do, use that, I can just delete this model and we can start a brand new model. So if I, for instance, I'll start a new level model here. And you'll see there's a number of different switched output configurations that we can have depending on whether the outputs are normally open and normally closed, wide differential, uh, etc. Depends on uh, your application, which one we select. I'll select a, a double threshold switch here. 
and you'll see that we've brought up one region of interest. So with that, if I want to work with that, I can. Otherwise, I can delete it here. And we can get different regions of interest in different shapes. So I can bring in circles, for instance. I can bring in freeform shapes. I can bring in a grid format. Down here we can define these grids by number of columns, for instance, a number of rows, and we can also change the shape as, uh, as we like. You'll see here all these regions of interest down the bottom are set up with a level graph. We can also display them, display them as a table here as well. Uh, if you don't want to work with these, we just delete them uh, through here. We can also just drag them to where we want to work. Uh, measured value type can be the mean value where we have an average of the pixels in the region of interest. We can look at the minimum value or the maximum value. Uh, for level applications, the maximum value can be a good way to work. Uh, here we also have the reference plane. The reference plane is the distance to the background. So I can either measure the distance from the orange line around the 3D sensor and input the value here, or I can do a, a teach uh, here. So to do a teach, I need to move the object out the zone. And we just click on the teach, and it takes a few seconds to do an evaluation. It takes about 20 images. Down the bottom here, I can also teach a value. So if I put on the teach button here, it will teach the, the height of the box and set our set points around it. Please make note of the set points here as well, um, because the hysteresis is actually above and below the actual set point. So you'll see at the moment I've got a hysteresis of 0 0.005 of a metre and it's applied to this midpoint here. So the actual switch points above and below uh, the midpoint of the set point. Once you're happy with that setting here, we can go and set our outputs in the logic function. Uh, it allows us to do a graph generation here so we can generate a, uh, our output table. Uh, we, if we're not happy with that, we can actually change that. So you'll see what we've done here is it's set up a switch point based on the set points we put in previously. Um, if we don't want to work with those, we can change them as well. So for instance, if I wanted to change the value here, um, and we didn't want our switched output, we want an analog output, I can simply delete these devices here. And if I come down the side here, you'll see there's a number of uh, functions, logic functions, switch points, etc. logic, uh, functions, outputs, uh, functions. So I could just simply bring in an analog output and we just drag the output from the process value and then we define our analog value here. So for instance, if I want to make it a, uh, a current output and between zero and one meter, I define it here. Uh, you'll see there's also this comparator here which defines our pass fail. This takes the quality value and makes sure we're getting a good image. So it's not actually defining whether our logic's passing or fail, it's just making sure we're getting a, a good image uh, based on the reflectivity of the object. And we also get an output three here saying ready for trigger. All these we can change to do whatever we like. So for instance, if I wanted a, another output, uh, digital output two based on that model, it's just a matter of defining the want. So I'll just go to our model, drag it in. We'll just take regions of interest one, insert a logic block. And for instance, if I want to, um, we can take a comparator here, take our process value to, to this point here and put a value in a, uh, a fixed value. and simply drive output two from this. There is only three outputs, and please be aware that uh, 
the analog output can only be used on output one. Once you're happy uh, with your outputs here, we can actually set our process interface, our Ethernet string. So you'll see there's a number of variants we have here, TCP IP, Ethernet IP, Profinet. Uh, we can define some different string depending on the information that you want to see. For instance, completeness, basic sensor information, all sensor information, volume in litres or cubic metres, or we can do a custom string. Uh, with this we can change things, so for instance if you don't want the delimiter we can simply delete it here. Uh, so it's free to define the string however you like. Once you've finished the string uh, and all your other settings you can go here and actually set your outputs. Uh, it's coming up at the moment with a fault simply because I've got nothing on the analog output. Uh, but this allows you to go and do some tests. We can trigger manually here. We can stop the test uh, Defining on what you, you're trying to, uh, to achieve You'll see here. We also have the PCIC output. This is our process output Here in the string it's actually defining the height of the, um, the box there. If I look at the results, we'll see the value here and if I bring it into a um, Table format, it's 47 uh, millimeters high I hope that gives a bit of an idea of the uh, setting of the, uh, the 3D sensor. Uh, you also see here with the analog output, it actually displays the analog output in a milliamp value because we set it between 0 and 1 meter. The actual value in milliamps is 4.8 milliamps. Uh, so hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea of what's involved in setting up the uh, user defined mode. It's a very powerful tool within the 3D sensor uh, and uh, more information can be had by reading the, the instruction manuals but uh, hopefully this is enough information to get you started. Okay, thanks for your time and uh, good luck. Thank you. IFM, close to you.